This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello, let me take you through this challenging case. An elderly lady with pseudo exfoliation, poor midriasis, a hypermature cataract and a shallow antechamber is posted for surgery. The eyes with pseudo exfoliation with shallow chamber have the potential of having weak zonules as well. Well, in this case, the shallow chamber could be just because of the intumescent cataract as well. Let's see how things go. The side ports are being created with a nice intracondyl tunnel. The surgery is being performed under topical anesthesia. Under the air, intracameral lignocaine is used, followed by trepan blue. I am creating a scleral incision by choice. I can use the same incision to convert to a manual SICS if I end up in a difficult situation. My plan is to stretch the pupil and then take a call regarding whether I would like to use a pupil expansion device or no. OVD is injected under the iris to lift it up so that the Y hook doesn't touch the anti capsule during the stretching maneuvers. During all this planning, uh, the lens being intumescent has escaped my attention for a second. I begin my rexis and it's the usual size rexis instead of a smaller one which actually I had originally planned. And as I was realizing this, I could see that the rexis has extended already and I could not salvage it. So, I make a nick from the other side and then extend it to complete some sort of a rexus. So, I am not doing any hydrodissection because the rexus is not complete. During FACO, I need to take all the necessary precautions as the rexus is not continuous now. Strategies would be to maintain chamber dynamics very well throughout the procedure and ensuring that during division of the nucleus, less stress is induced on the torn edge of the capsule. The pupil has also come down in size and I am unable to visualize the torn edge of the rexus. Few sculpts are done to create a central trench so that I can bury into the central core of the nucleus. Once I bury my tip deep inside until the entire tip is buried and it touches the sleeve, the vertical chop is done. Well, you can note that the microscope centration is not great at this moment. I am probably focused on just the maneuvers inside. Once the first two fragments are free, I prefer to emulsify them in such cases where the rexus is discontinuous. The reason is, obviously emulsifying these pieces creates more space in the bag and this is of great help as it minimizes the stress on the weak torn anti capsule during further nucleus division maneuvers. OVD is replenished. First, the dispersive OVD goes in, followed by HPMC underneath it. The remaining happy nucleus is being divided, and the fragments will then be emulsified. The plane of emulsification is much more anterior than my routine cases because of the obvious reason that the rex is not being continuous. OVD is again being replenished. 
I'm just checking that everything is all right by just moving the nucleus around with my Sensky hook. The final piece is again divided into two pieces and then consumed followed by epinucleus aspiration. I fill the bag with OVD before starting to aspirate the cortex. At this point, I am suspicious of a localized area of zonular weakness here. I might have just caught the bag itself. I switch hands and go in to the other quadrant. Retracting the iris with the irrigation handpiece is a great way to visualize what my aspiration probe is catching when the pupil is not adequately dilated. So this quadrant seems to be done. Now let me go back to the area of suspected localized zonal dehiscence. I am retracting the iris with my irrigation handpiece so that I see well and carefully and slowly I am able to strip the cortex in this weak area. The bag is clean now. Time to implant the lens. I am using sodium hyaluronate to form the bag and this helps especially when you are using a multi-piece hydrophobic IOL. And that is the lens which I am going to use in this case. The lens is implanted into the bag. But I notice that the haptic is sitting in the area of the incomplete rexus. I need to manipulate it. But before that I need to remove the OVD from behind the lens. So I go in with my bimanual INA to remove the OVD. And since this is sodium hyaluronate, I am using my aspiration port to aspirate the OVD underneath the lens. The idea is it just is a little quicker. Now once the OVD is cleared off, now is the time to align the intraocular lens. With the chamber being maintained by the irrigation handpiece, I am using the Sinsky hook to rotate the lens to ensure that both the haptics are away from the area of discontinuous rexus. Just checking that the lens along with the haptics are within the bag. That's it, the case is done. These are the next day pictures. Well, she's doing fine. To summarize, planning is critical as is also implementation. A momentary loss of attention caused an issue in this case, which was avoidable, I think. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.